Welcome to, welcome to worship this morning. It's a beautiful day to be outside here in our church parking lot and to gather together for worship. A reminder that this service is being live streamed to our church Facebook page and will be posted to the website and YouTube channel as soon as possible. So we welcome folks who are worshiping with us online. On your way into worship, you should have received your bulletin and then your communion baggie. If you're worshiping online, I invite you to pause the video whenever you would like to. Um, to get your communion elements ready, your bread or crackers or wine or grape juice. 
And then I'll give you more instructions when that part of the service comes up. In your bulletins, you have um, your announcement page. And if you're worshiping online, these announcements are sent out with the weekly email. So if you're not receiving this information and you would like to, um, please call or email the church office and we would be happy to add you to the email list so everybody is getting the information that they need. A couple of things to lift before you. Um, first of all, remember to um, tear off this perforated side. Um, if you would like to share any information or check any of the lines, um, if you're interested in participating in any of those things or helping out with any of those things. There's also room on the back for prayer requests. And then you can put these sheets in the offering box on the table in the back. The QR code to scan for offering is also on the front of this announcement page and it's posted on our website too. So if you want another um, way of giving, that's a way you can do that. But you can also put offerings in the offering box in the back on your way out of worship this morning. Please do pay attention to everything going on. I was just saying to somebody this morning that summer is a different kind of busy around here. So there's still a lot of things going on, lots of things to keep track of. Um, you can read the council update, the financial update. And then on that um, second page, the lifelong learning mission news. Um, please note the summer book study is starting on Wednesday. So if you would like to join us, you can check that on the perforated side. There is a, the top box is one that you can check. And we are hoping to start off with the chapter one. So if you plan on attending, if you could read the introduction in chapter one before Wednesday, that would be great. If not, just show up and you can be part of the conversation. If you have any questions about that, you can let me know. Please read about the Dartball Aluminum Can Drive, as that is coming up for bringing cans to help support our Dartball team. And then also uh, the fidget mats and the food pantry and lots of things going on too. So thank you to those of you who have helped out with the fidget mats. And also I've seen people bringing in some bags and cans for the food pantry. So thank you for those donations. In addition to accepting um, food donations, we still accept financial gifts too as well. So you can just mark your donation, your check for the food pantry, and we will make sure that gets to where it needs to be. Those are all the announcements I have for you this morning. I invite you to just take a deep breath to center yourself in this time, in this space, as we begin our worship together. And you can just hang out in your chairs. Um, if you want to stand for the gospel, I'll invite you to do that. But um, otherwise, just stay comfy and cozy. And we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
Our first reading is from the first chapter of Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just that it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Ephesus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to God, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you, enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of God's beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Word of God, word of life, thanks, thanks be to God. God. If you, you would like to stand for the gospel, I invite you to do so. And this is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must we do to, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. So you may have heard this story before. I'm guessing that a lot of you have heard it before. It's not really a new story. Even if you didn't grow up in the church, it's one that people seem to be familiar with. It's often called the parable of the Good Samaritan. Although interestingly enough, the word good is never mentioned in the story. And interestingly, someone back in Jesus's day who was listening to him tell this parable for the first time, they would not have used the word good to describe someone from Samaria. But this is one of the Bible stories that people remember learning when they were in Sunday school. And we use it when we teach kids about how to care for others. And when we look at this parable, we typically don't try to identify with a particular character. Sometimes you can identify. Like next week we hear the story of Mary and Martha and like, oh, I'm a Martha. You can identify with certain people. But when it comes to the Good Samaritan parable, we don't usually identify with a particular character, but we're usually taught to be like one of them. So we can think about that. If you had to pick a character in this story, who would you want to be like? The Levite or the priest? I don't think so, right? 
nobody would raise their hand for that one. They're the ones that just walk on by. Even though their social standing was far better than the Samaritan, they did not show compassion to the man who was left for dead in the ditch. They walk down the road, they see the beaten man, and then they walk by on the other side. So we certainly would not want to follow their example. I'm guessing that if I said, who would like to be like the Good Samaritan? Everybody would raise their hands, right? We want to be the ones to show compassion. And because, I mean, that's obviously what God would want us to do, right? To show compassion. And Jesus tells us at the end of this parable to go and do likewise, to go and show the compassion that the Samaritan showed to all of our neighbors. So we know this. This isn't like news for us, right? We know that we are supposed to be compassionate towards others. We also know, though, that this sometimes isn't always easy. It isn't easy to challenge authority when laws prioritize money and power over compassion. It's not easy always to use our voices to speak words of compassion when maybe it feels like the world isn't willing to listen. And it isn't easy to act compassionately towards others when people sometimes are more interested in expressing their own opinions than about actually caring for their neighbors. But when we hear this story, I'm guessing that we can all agree that we are supposed to share compassion like that Samaritan did. After all, if those who were hearing the story back then would think that the person who would have been least likely to help, if that person can have compassion for someone, then certainly we can. But what does this mean for us today? What does it mean for us today? Well, maybe it means that we can do better at seeing our neighbors in need. Maybe we can do better at being compassionate. And sometimes like we can't stop to help, but we can make a phone call. Sometimes we can't have a face-to-face -face conversation with people, but we can pray. And maybe, just maybe, we get better at seeing our neighbors in need and having compassion when we think about the loved child of God who's in the ditch. Sometimes we need to do the hard work of praying and reflecting on how we have been the ones who have walked by, or if we have been the ones who have hurt people that end up in the ditch. Sometimes we need to think about how our own words and actions have been harmful and how we are responsible for the brokenness around us. And that's hard, that's hard work. And we ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness and we work to do better because we know that as loved and forgiven children of God, we are called to be like the Good Samaritan. We are called to live our lives in ways in which people don't end up in the ditch in the first place. And then there are also those times, I'm guessing, that we can't identify with that person who's in the ditch. I'm guessing we've all had times at one point or another in our lives when maybe we're feeling like someone who is left with nothing, someone who's all alone, maybe even half dead. We can sometimes feel wounded and vulnerable. Sometimes we are suffering or in pain or hopeless, like we are in need of someone to save us. Maybe you've been that person and you felt like you're in need of help and others seem to just keep walking by. Maybe we too need someone like that Samaritan, someone who will come to us no matter what state we are in and restore us. We have that someone, right? God went so far as to send Jesus Christ to earth to live among us, die among us, and rise from the dead among us in order to show us how much God wants to be in relationship with us. God is in relationship with us in the midst of whatever is happening in our lives. And God gets into the ditch with us, mends our wounds, and lifts us out of the darkness of death and into new life. The grace and love of God are ours. In the joys of life and in the deepest of ditches, we are lifted up into the loving arms of God. And remember that that Samaritan doesn't just give the man money and walk away, doesn't just give him a ride, doesn't just drop him off somewhere where he is someone else's problem. He shows compassion, puts him on his own animal, takes him to the inn, stays with him, cares for him, pays for his room, and promises to return. This is the kind of relationship that we have with God. In baptism, God claims us, promises to be with us, 
and lifts us up from death. God brings us out of the ditch into new life in Christ. This is why we can see our neighbors and show compassion. Because Christ has done it for us. We can do it for others. And we need to do it for others. Because we are loved by God, we can love others. Because we are given grace by God, we can show grace towards others. Because we are seen by God, we can see others. And because we are given new life in Christ, we can go and do likewise so that others may know the unconditional love and grace of God for themselves. Amen. church, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and for all who are in need. Good and gracious God, fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious discrimination. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need. Bring kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, 
comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, experiencing abuse, feeling forgotten, silenced or avoided, especially those who are involved in our local outreach ministries. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. I invite you to get your communion baggies ready. And if you're worshiping online, to pause the video if you need to get your crackers or bread or wine or grape juice ready. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness. Through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, and into the future, we bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son, at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, and with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit, in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel off that top layer of the cup that leads to the wafer, or if you're worshiping online, to eat your bread or your crackers. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. If you're with someone who does not receive the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead or in the space in front of them and say the words, you are a loved child of God. I invite you to peel off that next layer that goes to the grape juice or if you're worshiping online to drink your grape juice or your wine, you may drink that. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. For our Franciscan sending, as we bless one another and go into the world in service, we'll split into the A side and the B side. Who wants the A side? First person to raise their hand. Okay, A side over here. You guys will start us off, and then B side, you will respond. And then at the end, we do it all together. So I invite the A side to start us. May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies be upon you and all you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. The God of peace, creator, redeemer, sustainer, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.